Coming up on today's show, we're going to run through some cut candidates, some surprise cut candidates for the Broncos after mandatory minicamp. Now, before we get into that good stuff, I was looking over the YouTube analytics comparing the Broncos breakdown to some of our other 21 NFL team channels here at Chat Sports. And in the month of June, we are currently ninth in subscribers, but we're only 100 subs, not even, from jumping all the way to third. So if you have not subscribed to the channel yet, I invite you to go ahead and do so. Lock yourself in for the best free Broncos YouTube content out there. Our first surprise cut candidate is definitely a surprise. Did not think I would be talking about Javante Williams today, but there has been some growing traction online regarding Javante Williams maybe being a little bit on the hot seat. So you can look at Denver's running back room, which has seen the emergence of highlight reel Jaleel really excel over the spring, and there's a couple of reasons why. But for me, I, I'm not quite in bed with this idea of Javante Williams is going to be cut this year. Um, Jaleel McLaughlin was running with the first team offense, which is great to see, but it's also worth noting that the entire picture has to include the fact that there's no pads on in minicamp, right? So the younger, the smaller, the faster guys, they tend to excel because there's no one there to tackle him, all right? Williams was running with as low as the third team offense, according to some reports, which definitely far from ideal, but I'm just not going to buy into the fact that Javante Williams is going to get cut going into the fourth and final year of his contract. Uh, Sigmund Bloom, it's a pretty big NFL Twitter account, tweeted out, the top Denver running back looks like Jaleel McLaughlin. Will Javante Williams even make the team? Quote from Cecil Lammy over at uh, Denver Sports. Slow down. Wait for the pads to come on, and then we can get a much better representation about Javante Williams' stock right now. But no, I am not going to be a believer or subscriber to the idea that Javante Williams may get cut. Could Jaleel McLaughlin outperform and outshine and take some of Williams' role away from him? Yeah, I'm not going to deny that possibility, but I don't see why that correlates to, well, Javante Williams is getting cut. For who? You, you want to make sure you can develop Samaj P. Ryan a little bit more? Javante Williams maybe drops down from RB1, but I don't think he drops out of this roster altogether. Last year, Williams, 217 carries, 774 yards. Yards after contact, though, and this is where Javante Williams excels. 372 yards. That makes up almost uh, a little under half of his total yard yardage. So for Javante Williams, he has always been a punishing, bruising running back. And when you can't do that in OTAs and minicamp, you're not going to stand out like a Jaleel McLaughlin would where he excels because of his quickness, elusiveness, and speed. But it's definitely a make-or-break year for Williams. There's no denying that. He's entering the final year of his rookie contract. He is going to be two years removed from his injury, which happened last, or no, not last, two years ago, October 2022. So it's a contract year, two years removed from his injury, to me, a lot of arrows are pointing in the right direction for Javante Williams. I'm not going to go as far to say like he's going to be a Pro Bowl back this year, but I do think Javante Williams will be better than what some of the recent reporting would indicate he will be. Now, will Javante hold on to the RB1 role? Get in the comment section right now. Yeah, you watching. Get in the comment section. Give me a yes or give me a no. Second cut candidate for the Broncos, Zach Wilson. This one is... Not a huge surprise, but they did just trade for him, so it'd be a relative uh, shocker to move on from someone a few months after trading for him. But Zach Wilson, in my eyes, and I think in everyone's eyes, is QB3 on this team. I still think Jared Stidham is number one. Bo Nix is backing him up for the time being, and then Zach Wilson. But if I had to rank the three quarterbacks throughout the spring practices of OTAs and minicamp, I think Jared Stidham would be number one. Bo Nix is number two. And Zach Wilson is number three. I know everyone's looking for good news, and the good news would be, oh, the first-round draft pick rookie quarterback is balling out. And Bo Nix was a really good quarterback in the spring, but I still think the slight edge goes to the incumbent Stidham. Ultimately, I don't think we're going to see Zach Wilson get cut either. I think the Broncos are going to carry three quarterbacks. I think there is something to the uh, front office believing in Zach Wilson, 
more than maybe what his stats would indicate in terms of a level of trust you should give him. But I think that the Broncos are just going to roll with three quarterbacks when you've got a rookie taking up one of those spots anyway. The more experience surrounding him, the better. And Zach Wilson, he is, believe it or not, the most experienced quarterback on this team when it comes to starts. So that's why I think we're going to see Zach Wilson make this Broncos roster and be one of the top three or be uh, one of the three quarterbacks on this team. But sure, there is a possibility that he could get cut if the Broncos decide, yep, we're going to roll with just two quarterbacks. And Jared Stidham and, of course, Bo Nix, they won the jobs. Third cut candidate, this one would not be a huge shocker, Damari Mathis. The fourth-round pick, right, from Pitt two years ago, had a rough 2023 season. 35 tackles, two tackles for loss, one pass breakup. But unfortunately, when you look a little bit closer, his coverage stats for the first seven weeks until he was benched in favor of Fabian Moreau were some of the worst in the NFL, if not the worst, actually. He gave up 361 yards in the first seven weeks, four touchdowns, completion percentage of 75% when targeted, and no interceptions and just one pass breakup. Now, Riley Moss had a really strong minicamp, according to Vance Joseph. Talked about the athleticism that they saw out of Riley Moss. Unfortunately, Moss missed all of training camp last year due to a sports hernia injury. But if he can stay healthy and he can go out there and perform and compete, that might take away a roster spot for Damari Mathis if they have that much more confidence in Riley Moss being that third corner after Patrick Sertan. And I think Levi Wallace would be number two. Fourth cut candidate, it is center Sam Mustafer. So the somewhat recent addition, I think, is penciled in as this team's starting center if they had a game tomorrow. But that is very much subject to change since there's not a game tomorrow, not a game for another 12 weeks or so. My suspicion is the Broncos are hoping for Alex Forsythe, their seventh-round pick last year, or Luke Wattenberg, their fifth-round pick from two years ago, to emerge as a quality starting center or at least a passable grade as a starting center because then they can kind of start to build something long term as opposed to Sam Mustafer who's here on a one-year contract but Mustafer's got them both beat and by a country mile when it comes to experience right played in 52 games compared to Luke Wattenberger who has appeared in 23 games but primarily just because of special teams and Alex Forsyth has yet to step on NFL football field in the regular season so Mustafer, in my eyes, he has the edge because of the experience factor. But the issue is, he stinks. Like, go look at his PFF grades from his three years in Chicago. He played a little bit last year with the Ravens. He backed up Tyler Linderbaum. But the Bears were pretty happy to move on from Sam Mustafer when his time uh, was over and his contract was up. So if Sam Mustafer is starting for you, that says that you've got a really, really uh, weak depth at the center position. So hopefully we'll see the emergence of Alex Forsyth or Luke Wattenberg. And if we do, then I'm guessing they move on from Sam Mustafer. Fifth and final cut candidate, Greg Dulcich. This one's definitely going to be a bit of a head scratcher, but just stick with me for a moment. So unfortunately, we did not see any of Greg Dulcich during spring practices, neither OTAs or mini camp. He is still nursing either a hamstring or a foot injury. I'm not really sure exactly which one, or it's a combination of both. But the reality is the guy has only played 12 games through two seasons in the NFL. And last year, he only played 32 snaps total. That's about a half of football. So the third-round pick out of UCLA has been largely unavailable for this team. And I could see the Broncos just deciding, you know what, let's give everyone a fresh start. So more likely to be a trade candidate, in my opinion, than an actual cut candidate, because I do think a team out there would make a trade for Dulcich if the Broncos wanted to move on from him, someone would be willing to bring him in and try and rehab him and get. I mean, he had a pretty promising start to his NFL career. 36 grabs, 436 yards, two touchdowns in his career, which I know over the course of a career, that's not very impressive. But keep in mind, his career is 12 games. So in 12 games, he had 436 yards and two touchdowns. I mean, you get that guy some work down the road, and sure, he might not become Kelsey Gronk level, but he could be a quality starting tight end for you. So I think we could see the Broncos maybe trade Greg Dulcich if the rest of the tight ends like Lucas Kroll and Adam Trotman are impressing this coaching staff and the Broncos decide we're just done kind of going around the carousel hoping that Dulcich will be available for us today or tomorrow. We're just going to wipe our hands clean. 
trade him, and give everyone a fresh start. Before we sign off and get you guys on out of here, if you made it to the end of the video, share this video with a Broncos fan. I want everyone to see this video because the more eyeballs on it, the bigger the channel, the bigger the channel, the more studio space, the more studio space, the more content for you all at home. So make sure to send this video to a friend that's a Broncos fan and have them subscribe as well. All right, that will do it for us on this edition of the Broncos Breakdown. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and I'll catch up with you guys later.